broadcast live. Ah. Do I look like I'm a criminal? Uh? Just because I'm. Yeah, ready? Yo, man, firstly, youngster, what's up? Ah, salutas. I'm Daedalic. I'm Daedalic. You know, I'm Daedalic. I know, yeah, because when I greeted you downstairs, you said, Are oh, you Daedalic? Like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm Daedalic. Ah, especially salute. today, Daedalic. Ah, well. So, I, you know. <laughs> Yo, I mean, congratulations on the album. You know, um, 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 I think I must say it is one of my. It was it was a journey. It was a journey listening to that album. Um, there was big hash and you that were out last week, and then I saw how many tracks you said. I said, "Fuck, youngster, I got no time for this shit." Exactly. I'm like, yo, I just time. Play, I just played big hash. I said, I got no time for this shit. No way. But luckily. My family was gone, I was on my own. You had a gap. It was like when I was 12 years old listening to rap music, I literally was sitting like this next to the speaker. What a journey. Thank you. Thank you. Coming from you, because you're a very critical man. No, no, no. You, you're you, a very critical you, you're man. You're taking us on a trip, B. Your album like was a, it was a trip. I even posted something. I posted your album and hands down and said, two different worlds, mm. but very, very important at yes, this time. You indeed, know what I mean? Indeed. Yo, there's so much that I, I packed into those tracks, even though it's it's 22 songs and it's like one hour, 44 minutes. There's Fucking so much, hell, that's what I saw. Yeah, so much information, so much valuable information also, so much history, mm. a rich history, um, a dive into a cultural background that I don't think many South Africans are familiar with, black, white, colored, Indian, like... Mm. For the first time, even colored people themselves, you must also understand that we haven't been very well educated mm. about our own history, yeah. you know, and about our own origins. So I think I learned a lot making this album, even speaking to my grandfather, going to do my own research. Is that as your well. grandfather? That's my grandfather. Oh, I got words for him. But oh, go on. mate, so, I got words for your grandfather. No, you I might not like them, but we're gonna we're gonna go. No, but that's the thing. Like coming from that generation, I mean, the the senior population, those who have lived through this, I mean, if you speak to old people generally, they have this, I won't say cynical way, but it's like they have no filter also, you know, yeah, because yeah, yeah. of the experiences they've lived through, mm. they feel they've earned the right to say things how they see it, you Respect. know, and, and at the same time, we have to give them that grace because their lives are coming to an end now, mm. so if they don't say it, we'll never know. Yeah, you know? yeah. That was beautiful though, man. I mean, I, I just want to say, yo, if you haven't listened to the album yet, you got to listen to the album. It's a, it, and when I say listen, I'm not playing with the word listen. Operative word listen. You literally take us through a journey of everything. Yeah. Uh, the way that you embrace um, being colored, which we're going to tap into also. No doubt. Um, and, and, and your world is amazing. But I want you to tell me about um, selling clothes and sneakers what does the day look like when you are selling clothes and sneakers what do you wake up <laughs> and doing what was that day looking like damn i mean aside from just the various clients and the various customers that I'd come in contact with it was a thrill mm. you know for me to make my own money at such a young age mm. you know and i was also doing it out of a you know out of a want not a need mm. you know the want to look better or the mm. want to have better and the want to not also have that dependence on my mother mm. who was already, you know, straining herself in order to pay school fees mm. and put uh, groceries in the house and put clothes on my back. Obviously, mm. that comes first before whatever tackies I have on, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. So, I mean, for me, just living the way I was at that time, I also knew that it was very similar to that of other backgrounds of rappers mm. in the states that I'd, that I'd listened to asking for themselves mm. you know but it also it also came with a price mm. Mm. you know I was I was betrayed a lot I was almost killed and when you go collect your money hey they came to collect me bro they wanted to collect my money yeah you know what I'm saying they wanted yeah. to collect my life along with it bro so I look at the dangerous aspect of it and I think to myself, okay, on the one hand I was doing it for material gain, but on mm. the other hand I was willing to put my safety on the line, put my family's safety on the line, my mother's safety on the line, just so that I could have a silver chain on my neck, you know? And I look at it now and I think it's foolish, but at the time, like I say, it was a thrill and it was also an experience for me to live, to live a life, 
You know, nowadays children are very sheltered also. Their, mm. their parents are trying to keep them away mm. from dangers and keep them away from what society mm. has to offer them, you know, the, the pitfalls and the traps of society. And I understand that, but also at the same time, you have to allow your child to live his own or, or her own life because their story will not be like yours. And even though you're going to try and save them from certain realities, some things they cannot escape, some things they're going to have to experience and they're going to have to go through it by themselves. You must be there to catch them when they fall, mm. but you must also allow them to fall. So let me ask you, right? Um, someone is going, man, what the fuck? This nigga trying to be gangster. You ain't selling drugs, you know? No. Fucking sports scene, fucking cross trainer, fucking shisha. Mm. Whoever they sell sneakers, yeah. What could be dangerous to selling sneakers? You ain't selling drugs. Yeah, I mean, you, you 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 can't position selling sneakers like yeah. selling drugs. Yeah, you know what I mean. The only narcotics I ever sold in my life was weed. But then again, we all sold weed. But Everyone has sold weed in their lifetime. Yeah, not me. You sold cigarettes. <laughs> you see, it's close enough, bro. It's close enough. No, no, I'm you know what I mean. I mean, um, no, I'm just saying. Yeah, I, I, yeah, no. I, because I want to unpack. You want to understand what is and what is dangerous about selling they? sneakers? You now, know what I mean? You ain't selling drugs. For you know sure, I mean? for sure. If you listen to the song "Techies" uh, that I made in 2016, which is produced by Loopster, who mm. produced La Familia on the album, mm. if you listen to that track. I say, uh, when I was eight, I tried my first pair of Jordans on. Also, mom, can we buy these? She said, sorry, son, I just can't afford. So I hustled the money because I wanted to own it. The boys in the wood broke in my house and stole it, mm. you know? So on one hand, anything that generates income for you in a positive way attracts hatred and jealousy. That comes with it immediately. immediately. If you are trying to better your circumstance amongst people who are living in the same condition as you, and they are not trying to better their circumstance, they almost make it your fault because you're not helping them mm. or you're not assisting them mm. as much as you should be. Mm. So what I did was, by chilling with the boys in the wood, I looked at their hustle. I looked at how they were getting money. They weren't selling sneakers though, but they were hustling. So for example, your phone gets stolen today, it ends up in uh, there by me mm. and they mm. sell it, you know? Your car gets broken into and your items get stolen. They're mm. selling it there by me. Mm -hmm. You know, they're distributing it there by me. So I saw this and I was like, the money that they're using, what are they doing with it? Are they saving the money? Are they putting it in a kitty? Are they putting mm. it in a piggy bank? Are they mm. investing it? No, mm. they're spending it on drugs. Mm. Not even on clothes. Mm. Not even on a chain. They're spending it on drugs. Mm. Which is actually destroying them. Mm. So on one hand, they're putting their life on the line just to buy something that's then putting their life on the line. Mm. So the mm. cycle actually doesn't have a payoff in the end. Mm. I apply that same muscle without stealing though, but rather merchandising. So mm. what we call these guys in Cape Town, you'd call them merchants, a mm. mert. Mm. He's a guy who has a house shop, a uh, Hiswinkel. Mm. So he'd be selling your various miscellaneous items, mm. DVDs, microwaves, ovens, yeah. fridges, yeah, yeah. Uh, jewelry, mm. and sneakers and clothing is one of those things. Mm. So, so I had a, a cousin who was into that, you know, but amongst that also, um, you know, there were, there were substances also that were being, uh, being traded and exchanged, but I obviously didn't get involved in that because mm. I knew that that comes with a different kind of a, a, a security and danger that I wasn't prepared for. Mm. I wasn't prepared to put my life on the line for drugs because like I told you, I'd seen what my friends were doing in the mm. neighborhood. So I didn't know where that result is going to get me. Mm -hmm. Whether they go to prison or they're going to kill me. So I thought I'll try something lighter, mild, and just see if this will get me to where I need to be. And because of hype and because of kids always wanting the freshest and wanting the best, there was a market for it, mm -hmm. especially in the wood. Yes. You know? So these, I mean, these techies and these, these, these labels that we wear, they come off containers. Yeah. You know, they come into the port and they dock there and then they get distributed amongst the various retailers that are going to sell them. We didn't, we didn't do that. We didn't go that route. We crack the containers. Mm -hmm. Understand? So they crack the containers and then the products end up, you know, falling off the truck somewhere along the line. And it lands up in our position, mm -hmm. you know? And then we end up moving. Mm -hmm. So now you're looking at a situation where I've got everything that the shop is selling for half price and I'm open 24 hours. Mm. I don't close. So you had stolen merchandise essentially? Basically. Okay. And now all these things are not original as well. Because mm. they're not being sold in stores. Mm. 
you know, it's not coming from the container from Malaysia yeah. or from Bangkok or Thailand. It's not coming from that container and yeah. going to the store. Some of it is going to the flea market. Yeah, Some yeah. of it's going to Belleville flea market, Musenberg flea market, uh, Cape Town parade. You know, to all these different locations. So you you, you so, like you become a target now, basically, because because I'm moving product at a fast rate. Also, cool. With that ambition that I had, yeah. you know, to 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 attain money, I realized that because I was working for myself and because I was using the, the income to better myself and better my own situation, that angered those around me. It wasn't doing the same mm. with the same money that we were making. So you're, 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 were y'all we were a little team crew. selling? Yeah, crew we're a selling. crew. So but even the people you're selling with, they literally trying to get at you? The people that bought. Ah. The people that bought, and not so much the ones who were selling with me, because ah. in the end, it was just me and my cousins. Mm. You know what I mean? So we were more or less running it. Yeah. And then obviously, you know, my friends joined in. I mean, they ah. spread the word for yeah, me. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? But I think it got... But, it got too popular. Yeah. My house became too known. Yeah. People knew too much about what was going on inside my house, which is not always a good thing. Ah. People was counting your pockets and shit like that. You know what I mean? Ah, shit. So because of that danger that came with it, and the risk as well that came with it, I mean, there were certain people who didn't want to buy my, you know, my tackies that I was selling because they knew where it came from, mm. and they didn't want to even have that in their position because it's like you attract some of that energy as well. If you take stolen goods, you're carrying stolen energy. Of course. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of things that I was into at that time, it, you know, it came with a, with a major risk okay. that I didn't even think of. That, really, that, that explained to me, you know, I mean, like, because I was trying to understand where the danger is. Mm. And obviously, it stems from jealousy. It stems from the risk of the people you're stealing and it's illegal. from. And it's illegal. But how much are you making? Top of mind, how much, what's the most, what's the biggest amount of money you made from what you were doing? Top of mind, just a number. I probably making like, this is now like 16, 17 years old. I was maybe making like a thousand rand a week. 16, 17 years old. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's not I, bad at all. Um, there was uh, there was a song where I, oh, was Yati where I say started selling Nike sicker I had like 12 pairs. Mm. So I mean that was my own collection. Yeah, that yeah. That wasn't yeah. The, the the collection I was selling. That was yeah. mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were not fake. No, no, no. I was buying my shit <laughs> proper. I was buying my shit proper. But even the ones that were coming off the containers. I mean, you must understand that these containers are not organized in terms of fake and real. Sometimes they're going to be all mixed up together, mm. you know, mm. and you're going to have to go through it and nitpick. But bear in mind also the quality then was a little bit better than the quality now. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. what you're dealing with now is you're dealing with like mass production. Mm. So the Chinese market has, has almost cheapened the materials and cheapened the fabrics that they're making mm. these garments with ah. because of the demand. The demand is so high, they want to make it at a rapid pace now. Yes. Whereas that time, not everybody was checking for Jordans and Nikes. Mm. All right. You know? So check it out. Just give me a number. And I mean, obviously, I've been listening to the album. How many friends do you think are watching the prison ceiling? Is it, obviously I'm pulling lines, you know. I'm pulling lines. A, I want to call this. It's not in the stool, but the album is so. It's so. It, the narrative is so yeah, descriptive. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. so visually clear. I can literally interview you. It's more interview than, through that. It's more than ten. Yeah, more than ten, definitely. I just got the message right now outside your building mm. to tell me another one of the guys of my of my associates is in prison right now. There downstairs, Ilovo mm. Senton. Got the message right now outside your building to tell me another friend of mine is in jail. It's crazy. It's a reality. I mean, I didn't want to believe it at first because we heard it yesterday already. So yeah. I was like, nah, because I heard this, but I last week he was out and he was mm. by, he went to visit his mother's so I was like, are you sure his motherfucker's in prison, bro? Because mm. last week I heard he was, he, he was by his mommy's house. Mm. So, you know, I mean, the streets is watching. Tell me, now you being youngster where you are, you hate it for your sneakers, but fuck the sneakers. Now you fucking here, yeah, you're in Joburg. What conversations are you having and what is the interaction like with a lot of your friends who have come back or go back and forth? Do you still, is there still even any type of... If you listen to the, uh, the intro of this album, I mean the intro is seven minutes long. Yeah, it is, yeah. That's probably one of the longest intros I've ever come across in hip-hop music, you know? Yeah. And the conversation that we have there, two of those guys are in prison as well. Hmm. Those are the kinds of talks that I've motivated them and inspired them to start having. Being that they're seeing what I'm trying to do in my own community by mm. um, giving out food, 
by you know giving out blankets and clothing, mm. by giving out baby clothes and and clothes for women during a, a, um, a winter, by I come to shoot my music videos there, by coming to bring you know a filmmakers and documentary artists there to 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 capture that story. Yeah. You know, so they see that I'm trying to shed light and trying to make some sort of a positive change and positive influence on the community itself. Mm. So now they as you know the you know the members of, of gangs and members of the underworld they see that and they think to themselves like shouldn't we try and assist him or shouldn't mm. we try and make his job easier at mm. least you know so that when we bring these people here to come film it they can see there's an improvement he is making and mm. it's not just like a set design yeah, or it's yeah. not just like you know for you know for the camera cameras. some people do shit for the cameras yeah, yeah. bro and and the cool thing about it is that when cameras come there and I come with the cameras it's not like I wasn't here yesterday without cameras yeah, or yeah. last night without cameras you know mm, what I mean mm. I'm so I mean I'm so connected with him that it's almost it's almost second nature with him to see me with and without cameras mm, mm. You know, so I'm not coming there to try and you know I'm to profit of the poverty yeah. I'm just trying to to tell a story that I feel is not being told or has never been told in this manner or, or in this generation as well you know are you still in the hood though are you still so I mean I live on the border now mm. and that's good enough for me Mm. It's good enough for me because I can always remove myself from the, the environment that I come from, you know. But I live like on the border of my of my neighborhood you know, that I used to stay. Wait, wait, where's the hood you stay? Weinberg. Weinberg. Still the same um, place. Don't you feel? Th I feel this is. Um, I just live on the other side of the train tracks now. <laughs> <laughs> I have to just go on the other side of the tracks, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, when I think about it, I'm not in America. I think it's the same. It's, but it's the same Nipsey Hustle thing, right? How do you see the Nipsey Hustle thing in comparison to your life and, and the fact that you're still in the hood, you still go to the hood, you do? I mean, because the reality is that, you know, um, um, someone else is from the hood, your hood, is making it, is not coming back. Do you know what I mean? You, like, doing what you're doing in the world, you're going back. How did the Nipsey Hustle, what did, the, what did you think of the Nipsey Hustle? Is there, can you even align things and go, it, uh, it, and I'm not talking about him as an artist. I'm just mm. saying you as a youngster, being who you are, with the mind that Do you I have. Do I see any similarities yeah, to what he yeah, was trying to yeah. achieve? It broke my heart, bro. You know, it broke my heart. I shed real tears, not fake tears. Mm. You know, because listening to him from high school, 2008, seeing the journey, and then seeing him turn into his own businessman, independent businessman, aside from what he was doing with music, like you say, aside from his artistry, mm. like that motivates us in Cape Town, being that we know that we are not in, you know, the most popular city in terms of the media and music, mm. you know. Mm. So we know that our hustle that we have to apply there has to be a different strategy to the one that you guys are applying here, mm. you know. So when people ask me about my 30 mixtapes, or when they ask me why do you have so many videos or so many features and stuff, I, I say like, you have to always remember that I don't come from the, you know, the media hub of South Africa. I come from the tourist hub mm. of mm. South Africa. So because of all that, uh, the content, and because of what's going on in the environment, like I say, it's a tourist attraction, Cape mm. Town, you know. So. Mm. There's so much happening in different pockets of Cape Town that gives me my ammunition to write, you know. And I felt like I was telling a story that needed the kind of graphic narrative that I took a charge of. And he was doing the same thing, you know. He, he spoke about the eels. I feel like he's writing as well. Not many people delve into that mm. because he wasn't rapping about senseless shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he spoke a lot about the environment. He spoke a lot of the condition of his people, what he went through, what he lived through and succeeded. Mm. You know, the gang culture as well. That's also something I could relate to. Mm. I myself wasn't a gangster, but my neighbors were gangsters. But, so, but what I'm just saying, you know, as a simple thing, as with, with all the things that you are doing in your community, um, it doesn't make you cautious because, you know, it don't matter where you are in the world. No. People are the same. They, bro, they'll take me out tomorrow if they want to. You, you, you go there knowing that. I go there knowing that. I know this. And what happened to him, and a few months ago they killed a, a gang leader outside a mosque. Mm. Outside a masjid. They shot him on a Friday. Juma, the holiest day. You know I go to mosque every Friday. Yeah, no, no, Just yeah. imagine I came out to a mosque and someone shot me. Bro. How would you feel about that? You know what I'm saying? So I mean, hearing this kind of thing, like what happened to Nipsey, it breaks my heart, but I know it's it all too to well. Home. Yeah, it's close I to know home. I know about this, you know what I mean? I know what it's like to see somebody try and make that kind of 
um, kind of positive influence and mm. that positive change and then get rewarded in that kind of a manner. You know? How strong is your family bond? I would say I'm strengthening it. Uh, you know, yeah. it, it wasn't really that strong for the past like 10 years, mm. 10, 15 years. You know, our family went through every rift uh, when I was young. And, uh, you know, everyone went their separate ways. Everyone mm. split up, which is not the ideal situation for any family. I mean, mm. we don't, we don't want to hear that because when you think of, you think of holidays that pass by and birthdays that mm. pass by and mm. you're like, there was so much time you should have reached out, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. But, um, I mean, doing what I'm doing now, I feel like I've also paid tribute to my family. Yeah. And I've also honored my family by releasing this album and by placing my grandfather on the cover and of by course. making him such a prominent role. And that's your grandfather. I thought that was Jerry. What? I <laughs> 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 like your yeah, shape or something. Uh, yeah, no, 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 that's the OG. That's the original. That's your grandfather. Oh, so you're, that's your grandfather speaking through the skits also? Yes. Yeah. Every single okay. um, a skit and, and every single narration on the album is through him, except the beginning, the placement right. special. That's my homies. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. I mean, on sense of you drop a lot, you know, a lot of knowledge. Do you think that rappers are prior to, are prior, prioritizing or bitching over a lot, a, a lot of the wrong things? You know, it seems like, you know, um, you, I think that you're addressing that is real life, you know, and um, and people literally get caught in the fantasy. Yeah. And did, is is that how you feel at times with some of these rappers? I, I definitely do, bro, because I think that uh, social media has also made the perception of being a rapper mm. seem better than what, than what it actually is to be a rapper. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. I, don't think that, I don't think they highlight the work enough. I don't mm. think they highlight, you know, studio time enough. I don't mm. think they highlight the writing process enough. I don't think yeah. they highlight the mix and mastering and the engineering process enough. Mm. And the touring and this, and, and, this. and this moment as well, like mm. the interviews, the interactions, mm. the discussions. Mm. When, the, I mean, when the album is done playing, now now speak about it. What is your album actually holding? Like, mm. what's in it if it was a bucket? How much water would be in this bucket? Or are there holes in Look, the, I think the cops are looking for they're you. They're looking wait, for me, just wait, just I'm wait speaking for out about crazy shit. That's why you they're know, like, hey guys, 75, we've got a colored guy the, the, that's uh, yeah. discussing the revolution. <laughs> uh, exactly. Uh, because attitude. Can we he, just take this He's trying to fix the colored community. He's trying to fix shit. We have to eliminate this bastard. We can't have that. We can't have that. Not after we've done all this distribution of the drugs. We can't have that. Yo, fuck that shit. So I think that at the end of the day, I'm just trying to set a positive example mm. for, for my family even that mm. didn't get the chance to live out their dreams. They are mm. adults now. Mm. Some of them have, have worked for, for decades mm. doing something that they were almost forced into doing yeah, of course. just so they could earn a wage. Yeah. You know? I mean, to live and die in CA through your eyes, there's another world that one is not aware of. What's the difference? You know, I was asking myself, what's the difference with colors in different regions? How do you... Mm. I mean, like, you know, I, I'm speaking as an outsider. You yeah. know, colors are like... Yo, yeah. the colors are from there. What's the difference with y'all, just generally? I would say Keep it's it simple for guys who... For sure, mm. for sure. I would say it's very similar to, to tribalism. Osa, oh, Zulu, okay. Benda, you know what oh, I mean? Like, okay. there are tribes even in black culture. Uh, yeah, of course. So, of I course. mean, why would people think that in colored culture there wouldn't be tribes either? Okay, you I know, got it. If you I look at it. the sand, Khoi sand, if you yeah. go back into the history of the Bushmen and so yeah, on and yeah. so forth, like, those were colored people as well. Yeah. yeah and look at the Cape Malays. Yeah. But the ones that were brought over from Malaysia and yeah. then uh, mixed here yeah, with the locals from uh, uh, from Cape Town, the Cape of Good Hope, you know that uh, that spawned a different kind of a college, was the Muslim college, you know. So now you got Joburg college, you got Eden Park college, Indeed. Westbury college, Durban, you got Kimberley, Durban college. Yeah, literally Port Elizabeth. It's crazy now. Yeah. It's like, but it all stems from the Cape. Yeah, you know, it spread from there. Everything spread out from there, you know. Do you think your, communi your community generally, except the gangs and the guys you've been hanging around with, um, do you think they appreciate the, how you try to lift them and rip them? And if you, and, and I'm not just talking about your fans, you know. No, yeah, you, you mean like the direct community, like yeah, those who actually yeah. still live in these places. Are, are, the, like, are they hearing you? Yes, yes. And the funny thing is that, that even the adults mm. are taking an active role and interest in what I'm saying. Mm. You know, they're allowing the children to listen to what, you know, what my music is trying to convey. If I look at it, when I bought Eminem's albums, mm. when I bought DMX albums, like when I was a kid, my mother didn't really agree with, you know, all the screaming and all the swearing. Yeah. So certain songs I couldn't even play in the house around her. I had to wait yeah. till she was gone yeah. before I could play track whatever and track 12, you know. Yeah. But I tried to make this album. I mean, even if you listen to it, there's, there's not much cursing on it. 
yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I try to include as much information of substance as, um, that I could, so that if the parent were to walk in at track eight, I wouldn't be shouting your master push, or yeah. I wouldn't be shouting Kaap Stad Nair. Yeah, I'd yeah, be yeah. saying something that if the parent walked in at any moment during the duration of this album, they'd be able to even stop and lend the ear and mm. say, wow, I like the fact that my child is listening to this. Mm. Because I felt like, you know, hip-hop has always been considered such a vulgar genre of music yeah. that the, the previous generation, the one before us, I couldn't connect with it. Yeah. But, I mean, now we're living in a time where, you know, people are sensitive, people are hypersensitive, so mm. I don't also want to offend you know, um, the parents of the consumers. Yeah. You know? Give me some colored heroes, you know, except yourself, right? Um, give me some colored heroes, gang or just social heroes, just oh, top yeah. of mind. I mean, you know, I'm the top of the mind, I'm going to say Ashley Creel, mm -hmm. the number one. Why? He was an activist, he was a colored activist who, you know, was very, was very involved in the communities. Mm. Um, I mean, during the apartheid regime, you know, mm -hmm. and he spoke out and and he was very vocal about the issues that I'm discussing on this album and the issues that plague our community still today mm -hmm. and the oppression obviously that he was facing at that time. He actually gave a very, um, a very heartfelt speech at Weinberg Secondary, mm -hmm. which was a high school. Is he still alive? No, no, no. He was actually killed um, a few years after he gave that speech, like two years. He was killed in the Grand Parade. Mm -hmm. You know where that is? Um, Par uh, in Parliament building uh, on City Hall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. City Hall is there, so you get the Grand Parade, that big square, and then yeah, you get the um, City Hall yeah, yeah. opposite, and you get the statue in the middle. Yeah, yeah. So he was actually killed there during a march, mm. you know? And I'm um, rewind before he died, he gave a speech in Weinberg at a school, Weinberg Secondary, mm. and uh, the police was actually deployed there um, just to keep the peace. And all it took was for one guy to throw a stone at the cops, and it turned into an all out war. Like, um, uh, kids were shot, uh, kids were tear gassed, and then uh, the next day, uh, the children actually did another march for peace uh, because of what had happened the day before. And that march actually resulted in um, seven of those kids, uh, they call the Weinberg Seven, um, being, uh, uh, being unlawfully imprisoned. Mm. And they were all sent to Polsmo, all seven of them, two girls. Mm. You know, so, so imagine what that's like for a 16, 17 year old in that time. I, I mean, I think they were that age, they could have been even younger. Mm. Because mm. I know that they had to get their parents' consent. Mm. The parents had to drive them to jail. Shit. You know, so, uh, so I'd say Ashley Creel, I'd say Emil. Mm. Emil, XY. shout out to Emil. No, he, Emil. I feel like he's our KRS1. Emil is, is the power. Broadcast live.